Well, thank you all for inviting me today. I'm very happy to be here and, and happy to be representing my class at, uh, at St. Joseph's College. Um, it's a class of about 32, mostly juniors and seniors, um, almost all of them either business uh, majors of some sort or another or marketing majors specifically. Um, I teach marketing at St. Joseph's College and uh, uh, as we were on our way in today you might have passed my son uh, Brendan who's here uh, today and, and uh, he's uh, eight years old and, and uh, is on school vacation this week so when we rescheduled from last week to this week uh, it, it uh, led to a little bit of a logistic issue but uh, uh, we're figuring it out so uh, Happy to be here and, and uh, um, thank you so much, uh, first of all, to the town of Raymond for, uh, for inviting us to be part of this. Um, it's something that's, that's very important to the college uh, and, and something wonderful from an educational standpoint. To have students do some hands-on marketing research and analysis is just a, a spectacular opportunity and one that without this group uh, wouldn't have been available to them. So we thank you so much for that. Um, when we started the program, it's a, it's a, it's a class of about 32 students. Um, we decided that we would uh, break it up into groups um, and have the groups cover uh, different areas and, and uh, the groups self-determined what they were going to uh, what they were going to cover and and so two of our groups did general analysis of the overall survey um, one group uh, paid attention specifically to the um, open-ended questions and and finding ways of of putting those together and figuring out what people were were saying um, one group was focused on age uh, one group was focused on gender and then one other group was looking at the different household sizes. Um, and, and what we mostly found out was that there weren't too many strong differences. There were a few uh, in the area of, um, of house, I, I mean of, uh, of age, uh, but most, of, most of people in terms of uh, gender and household size were very much on the same page. Um, so you know, that's kind of the, the, the basis for it, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the thing that our, our students did. Um, from a methodology standpoint, um, it's a mixture of quantitative and qualitative analysis where we were looking to make some generalizations about uh, things based on uh, what people said in the survey, and then some uh, was not enough uh, to be uh, to to fit this, the the point where we could do meaningful statistical analysis, and so we approached that from the uh, from the qualitative approach, um, and our focus really has been on the eight domains of uh, of livability, uh, which was uh, which came from the the World Health Organization and has been put forth throughout the the, the country. Um, through AARP uh, and the grant that was mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, the eight domains, uh, there's a, a handout that, that has them listed. Um, first of all, um, outdoor spaces and buildings is, is the first domain. Um, and that was a real area of strength uh, that, that was found uh, among the, the uh, respondents in the survey. It was probably the strongest area, uh, and, and uh, it includes both uh, the buildings here in, in Raymond. Uh, the library was noted uh, specifically by a number of people. Um, and the other piece of it, in addition to buildings, is also uh, the issue of safety. Uh, and, and that was another very strong area where people uh, in general found us uh, to be a very safe community here in Raymond. So that was the, the strongest area. Um, the second area of, uh, of the second domain uh, is transportation. And that was actually seen just the opposite end. That was probably the greatest weakness that, that was perceived um, is, is transportation because um, people don't feel like there's adequate public transportation uh, in the area and, and certainly are, are seeing the, the opportunity for improvement and, and the hope for improvement in that area. Um, other domains, um, housing, uh, something where uh, near and dear to a lot of people's hearts and, and uh, um, is something where a lot of people, uh, especially people who are 
at or near retirement age uh, are looking for a little bit more and, and better support from the community, certainly a, a, a major point of emphasis from people. Um, social participation, the, the fourth domain and the fifth domain, uh, respect uh, and, and social inclusion were both found as, as being important um, and, and there was a mixed, uh, you know, a mixed result in that area. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, civic participation and employment. Uh, a lot of people in Raymond, uh, we, most of the, the respondents to the survey were uh, age 50 and above. You know, there were a, a, a relatively small number below age 50, but most were age 50 and above. Um, and, and one of the, the heartening things, I'm sure, from, from Raymond's standpoint is uh, people, and, and we see it here today with the number of people who are here in the, in the room, people are looking for opportunities to, to make a difference, looking for opportunities to volunteer. And that seems to be something that, uh, that is a, you know, a big point of emphasis as well. Um, Communication, uh, the seventh uh, domain, uh, communication and information, uh, was a, a, a bit of a mixed uh, seen as a weakness in, in some ways and a strength uh, as well. Uh, weakness in the sense of uh, people not knowing uh, where to find information, and I think um, you know, looking at your uh, Facebook page that's up and up and going, and also your your age-friendly website. You know, I think that's definitely a step in that direction of people being able to to find uh, access the information, uh, and then uh, also uh, speaking of it as a as a strength in terms of availability. Um, one of the first questions on the survey, if you, if you take a look at it, um, has to do with uh, the internet uh, and access to the internet, and, and uh, the number was 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 huge. Uh, one of the things that the that AARP is concerned about is that um, you know not everybody, uh, especially older people, may have access to uh, internet uh, and and smartphones. Um, and the two questions about uh, about internet uh, were uh, resounding. Um, something like um, almost uh, over 95% have internet access at home and um, um, or uh, yes uh, have ac access to internet and mostly uh, at home and so that's you know that's a really big number and and, and something that uh, you know that that speaks to uh, the viability of Facebook and website as as a way of uh, getting more people connected with volunteer opportunities, with um, opportunities to uh, engage more fully in, in, in social uh, and, and uh, civic uh, activities. So uh, I think that's a, a, a very good sign for, uh, for us here in Raymond. And then um, community and health services, again, perceived as, a, as being important and a bit mixed in terms of uh, what, what survey respondents said. So uh, that's kind of the, the quick overview of the, uh, the eight domains and uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so um, the, the first group of slides is from our um, age groups uh, and, and um, the, the numbers uh, under 64 uh, and, and 64 and older, the, the blue uh, is showing the, the younger group, the people under age 64, and the red group is, is above uh, age 64. Um, and so as we look at the, this number, uh, it really spoke to the livability that we have in general here in, in Raymond and, and the housing uh, where uh, people were very strong in their agreement to uh, to saying that that they uh, that where they live is, is is a place that's appropriate for them as they age. Now, as we move forward in in, in our discussion, uh, it speaks well to housing, but. Uh, you know, as we look forward, as we move forward, some of the concerns were more on the other end of the spectrum in terms of uh, the ability to get services and, 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 uh, um, and, and to uh, have, you know, the help that they're going to need in order to live independently and, and thrive in the community. So, uh, you know, the, the good news is you know, housing, you know, people feel like they can age in place given the right circumstances, given the right situation. So uh, that's, that's a, a positive, uh, you know, with, with some help. 
Uh, as we look at social participation, uh, again, uh, a little stronger on the agree side in terms of uh, feeling like they're able to, uh, to, to gain that. And as we look forward at, to a, a couple of slides moving forward, uh, we will also see some things where, uh, um, where, where people you know, aren't exactly sure where, uh, where the information is. And so again, you know, with the website up, with the Facebook page, uh, you know, if we're able to connect people to the information, uh, the opportunities exist, um, the information needs to, to, to get to the right people uh, you know, in, in a little better way. So uh, that's that slide. Um, we look at uh, ample social opportunities. Uh, that's uh, a, a, a point where uh, the people who were the younger group felt a little more strongly about social opportunities than the older group. Uh, again, something that may be addressed with you know not only more opportunities but also uh, better uh, communication about what those opportunities are. I think would, would be something where uh, that would uh, that would be useful. Um, and again, um, this is something where uh, it leans a little bit toward the agree side in terms of information. And so uh, what I think that speaks to is that uh, the information exists and some people are connected, aware, uh, you know, probably the people who are here today. You know, that's an example of the people who are connected and, and are aware of where to go for that information. But again, it's something that, that I think um, Raymond could do a, a better job uh, going forward and has made strides in that in terms of uh, what your group is doing uh, in, in terms of both the Facebook and website. Um, and then health and wellness. Um, you know, this is an area where there was um, some disagreement in that there, uh, you know, so, some, uh, you know, more you know, more people disagreed than agreed with the idea that um, health and wellness opportunities uh, options were, uh, you know, were, were strong here in, in Raymond. Um, so uh, as, as your survey showed, uh, there were uh, one person, two people, and, and three person households or three or more people households. Uh, and there was pretty strong consistency uh, among uh, those groups in terms of, in terms of um, almost all of the areas. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, living in their home have strong opinions about, uh, about you know, how, how people uh, of, of Raymond are being treated. Um, and um, they, they concluded that more than half of the, uh, the, the, the people uh, from larger houses uh, felt very strongly, uh, and this this one, uh, the this is the one about the safe community, and you can see that it was very strong in terms of both agreement and, and strong agreement that uh, Raymond was a you know was a very safe community to live in. So uh, you know that speaks well of uh, you know of our uh, uh, um, of of you know all of the the. Uh, um, the, the infrastructure, police, fire, uh, and so on. So uh, I think that's a very strong statement. Um, in terms of the uh, response from, uh, you know, from, from people uh, in terms of gender, 10% uh, 10, 10 of the, the people didn't want to be uh, identified in, in either, uh, you know, and, and then uh, large, uh, percent was female, uh, 63, almost 64 percent were female, uh, meaning only 26 and a half percent were male. Uh, so, um, you know, moving forward, if, if this is something that you do as a baseline, uh, it's something where you may look to uh, find places where uh, males are more likely to congregate uh, and, and also recognize that, you know, one of the things that uh, if you've had a chance to look at the AARP website, you know, it also says that uh, older males tend to be a little bit more 
standoffish. Uh, and so uh, recognize that, that that may be a challenge moving forward that you have to be a bit more proactive about in terms of getting uh, people to fill out the survey is, is that, um, you know, it may be just, you know, the, the nature. We're a strange bunch, we males, so uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, this area um, where we're looking for uh, Various, uh, this is uh, the group that was looking at the open-ended questions, the questions where you could answer uh, in any way that you, that you wanted. Um, and so um, this group uh, found so, some very interesting things um, in terms of building. Uh, the library was spoken of uh, and, and spoken of in, in very positive terms uh, throughout. Um, they also, uh, some people spoke of the need for a community center, uh, so, you know, that may be something to, uh, to consider moving forward. Um, and then uh, they also had some, some positive things to say about the school buildings here, uh, and, and that uh, there was some pretty strong agreement in terms of the statements, the statements that people were making about Raymond in terms of um, education being a priority for, for people. Um, with respect to housing, um, people were, were talking about the, the challenge of, uh, of aging in place. Um, the, the issue in terms of housing really seemed to be focused uh, on having, um, having access to things that were going to be able to uh, support them. Uh, um, you know, having, uh, you know, transportation we'll, we'll speak of, uh, but, but also having people, you know, able to do things that are going to help them, you know, to stay relatively independent with a little bit of help, a little bit of support uh, in terms of doing uh, chores and, and, and perhaps, you know, food uh, preparation and, and those things. Um, and then one of the biggest challenges for, for, for aging in place seems to be uh, a concern about tax rates. And, and that seemed to be something that was also spoken of, uh, was you know, having that uh, you know, property taxes, you know, pushing people uh, to, a, to a point where they may not be able to, you know, to stay in, in their homes, uh, despite their homes being suitable to them uh, during their aging, uh, aging years. In terms of community support and health, uh, again, that was mentioned uh, as an area that uh, you know people would like to see uh, something that's that's a little bit better, uh, a, a little bit more uh, fully uh, you know fully realized. Uh, transportation an area seen as being an area that was probably the greatest area of weakness that was found by the the uh, the group. And then um, communication, you know, being able to find that information, get that information um, is, is certainly something that people, people are looking for. Um, another thing that uh, our groups did uh, that I found very interesting, this is a word cloud. Uh, and uh, our group uh, essentially uh, took all of the, everything, all of the open-ended questions and looked for common themes uh, and there's a computer program that does this, and uh, one of our uh, one of our uh, cl uh, class members, Javier Mar Martinez, uh, did a really good job uh, in terms of uh, coming up with this and developing this and 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 shaping it like a house. I thought that was uh, that was a, a, a very nice uh, approach to it. And really, the the three themes that that uh, that were found throughout what people were saying. Uh, was availability, largely availability of, of services, um, accessibility, you know, being able to, to get places, um, especially with uh, transportation, and then affordability. You know, those were the three overarching themes that went throughout all of those, uh, all of those issues that were discussed. Um, overall results. Um, primary importance was for aging in place. People were concerned uh, about being able to stay in their houses, number one, and then number two, uh, transportation. And then following that, third and fourth would be um, having uh, access, having more uh, social and recreational events uh, in terms of uh, the, the domain related to, uh, to you know, social connection. 
and then uh, you know partly for the uh, the aging in place having some in-home assistance support uh, options as well um, in terms of overall results uh, the other section was in terms of what people statements that people agreed with and disagreed with um, you know the agreement was uh, involved in in um, aging in place uh, as something that people really wanted to focus on and um, continuing uh, the, the safety of, of our community here in Raymond. Um, and then social inclusion was, came in third and then making sure that, that their homes were suitable. So very similarity, very similar in terms of the two sections and the results. So you got some, some very good consistency. And then <clears throat> the greatest areas uh, of disagreement were in terms of the availability of home health resources and availability of, of public transportation for people who, uh, who don't, uh, aren't able to drive for themselves and are, and, or don't have a, a vehicle to drive and are looking for public transportation. So those were the biggest, uh, biggest areas of need. In terms of recommendations, um, we'll, we'll be providing a, a report with a, a, a bit more detail. I'm, I'm just doing kind of an overview today, <clears throat> today for you. Um, and then some recommendations for actions uh, um, moving forward. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that, this you know, going forward, and, and it'll be part of the, the end report that we do. But one of the things that we, we generally do, and, and one of the things that I had my students do, uh, was to put together uh, a SWOT analysis. Uh, and, and SWOT is something that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, where strengths and weaknesses are, you know, are kind of internal to us here in Raymond for the most part, and then opportunities and threats some of which uh, are, are come off of, come from the, are based on those strengths and weaknesses and some of which are based in 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 the general uh, you know external community um, so for strengths uh, definitely uh, safety in our community and buildings especially the library uh, was, was noted uh, weaknesses public transportation um, lacking uh, affordable support uh, for aging in place uh, and uh, communication um, opportunities. Uh, communication could address many of the issues uh, relating to some of those domains, uh, domains four, five, and six, which were largely around social and civic inclusion. Uh, definitely can be addressed largely through uh, communication, which it seems like your group is, is, is doing a very good job of moving in that direction. Um, buildings could be better used was something that, that was heard uh, in, in some of the comments that people were making. So, uh, you know, better use of the existing facilities. Um, people looking for volunteer opportunities, and so that can be uh, a, real, uh, a real opportunity is to connect people with some of the, you know, the volunteer, volunteerism. Uh, and then uh, the, the possibility of an opportunity being to build a community center. Uh, but again, uh, you know, that's something that's, that's uh, you know, may or may not be a priority, uh, you know, and, and if there's better utilization of the existing facilities, uh, that may not be as, you know, as compelling a priority. And then threats, um, high taxes, and then inability of people to age in place either due to high taxes or due to not having transportation, not having uh, you know that that addressing the inability to have access to uh, health services, and then also not having enough people to provide that support, that little bit of support that people need to to live independently, and. That's uh, essentially uh, what my class found. And, and again, I thank you so much for giving uh, us and, and them the opportunity uh, to, to do this because it's been a, a really uh, tremendous opportunity for them to do that, you know, do that boots on the ground kind of thing. And, and uh, we're looking forward. Um, you, the, uh, we're, we're also going to have the opportunity to have some of our students uh, present in front of the select board. Uh, 
we've presented uh, in class to a, a, a small group of people from the age-friendly community group, and, and it's just been a, a tremendous opportunity. And so I thank you. And um, if you have any questions, I'd love to, to uh, entertain them and uh, you know, either answer them or you know, share, the, share them with you guys. So uh, any questions? Sheila. Um, you know, the one <clears throat> thing I think I learned in this process um, was in our survey, um, providing that neutral, where, you, you know, we're not going either way. Can anything be inferred from that neutral section, which we had chunks of people in? Right. Um, the, the, the question was, uh, having that, that really strong neutral area. I think what often happens is, with, with surveys is when people uh, don't have a basis for opinion, if there's not something where they say not applicable or no basis for opinion, then they just put it in that, that middle category. And so it might be helpful moving forward if you do this again to have some category that sets it apart to have that not applicable kind of thing um, so that there's a difference between people who truly think you're in the middle and people who just, I, I don't really have any basis for an opinion one way or the other. Thank you. Yes. Of the sample size, especially of the two groups who broke up by age, what percentage of the eligible population do they represent? Oh, let me see. Um, so when, when, uh, when we, there's a complex calculation uh, for, for sample size, um, and um, the, the sample size, uh, um, it was, um, we had, let's see, there are, I think, 4,500 residents in, in Raymond, give or take, uh, according to the 2017 data. Um, and we uh, excluded anybody under the age of 20, uh, just because uh, that's, it, you know, it, it's, it's inappropriate to ask, uh, you know, young children especially. When you get into high school age, then it's okay to interview them. But um, that excluded about 20% of the population, so I think um, 3,900, I want to say. Um, and and um, of that 3,900, um, we had, I think, 293 responses, I think was the number that, that comes to mind. Um, and so um, that gave us, um, of the overall population, uh, the ability to do a 90%. We can be 90% sure uh, within a 5%, you know, plus or minus 5% uh, accuracy level. So a larger survey would give us, you know, a, a better uh, a better accuracy, you know, more certainty within that. Uh, but but again, some of the the groups like uh, the group that was doing, you know, male and female. Um, the female group, I think, based on uh, the, the um, size of the female population here in Raymond, it only gave us um, like a, about an 80 percent, which is the minimum that you should do when you're doing statistical analysis. You know, if, you, if you're going below 80 percent, you might as well pull out the magic eight ball or flip a coin or, you know, some of those decisions, uh, but uh, decision making tools. But um, really with, uh, with um, statistical, you're looking for at least an 80 percent level of, of certainty. So uh, the with, with the female group, that was able to get us to the 80%. And then of the overall group, we were at 90% uh, 90 level of uh, certainty. Any other Can questions? You also have all the backup data, because he's done the required sample sizes by each, as well as the formulas that they use. And we can provide those as backup material in the presentation when we post it. Anything else? Once again, on behalf of my class, thank you. It's been a spectacular opportunity, and uh, it's, it's wonderful, and, and we thank you so much for reaching out to us. Uh, you know, at St. Joseph's College, it's a, it's a really uh, important piece of, of what we do and who we are and what we stand for, so, uh, and we couldn't do it without you, so thank you so much.